As far back as I can remember, my dad took our family camping in the desert. He had a dirt bike, and for me, riding passenger with him was better than Christmas. The second we arrived, before we'd even set up camp, I relentlessly begged, borderline harassed him to take me for a ride. The thrill of being on two wheels was invigorating. I was obsessed. When I was 10 years old, finally tall enough for my feet to reach the ground on a bike, I was taught to ride in that good old fashioned sink or swim way. Pops taught me the basics of operating a motorcycle and sent me on my way. Typically when you teach anyone, especially a kid, you provide or require appropriate safety gear. <laughs> me, I was given a garage sale helmet, 2,000 sizes too big, Payless shoe store Converse knockoffs, and a pair of sweatpants. <laughs> in, the proper moto, uh, in the proper moto community, this is simply not how things are done. A dangerous activity like riding requires thorough instruction and many safety precautions. But when my dad was young learning to ride, it was the sink or swim garage gear safety equipment way or nothing. So that's what he passed down to me. In my youth, the seed was planted for a nonconformist way of riding and has evolved ever since. <laughs> Some things I do on my bike are simply for a thrill, while others are practical. Drivers on the road look at me like I'm nuts when they see four bags dangling from my arms as I ride home from the grocery store. <laughs> my ability and willingness to do the unusual on a bike changed my life forever. One fateful day when I took my girlfriend on the back and rode to Puerto Nuevo, Mexico to our favorite restaurant. I parked next to a small construction zone and as we dismounted, I noticed a tiny ball of fur scurrying through the pile of junk. Like any animal-obsessed adult, I began crawling through the rubbish in pursuit. Seeing a kitten caused a complete shutdown of my brain. I wasn't thinking about the fact that I was in a foreign country, on a motorcycle with no sane means of transporting her. My only thought was, kitten! She was a shifty little creature, easily avoiding my advances. My girlfriend, who certainly loved animals, but perhaps had more self-control, was able to say, honey, we're on a motorcycle, we can't transport it, uh, plus we're about to eat and I'm hungry. Get off the ground and stop chasing that poor cat. My head snapped around, <laughs> peering angrily, brow furrowed, expressing my distaste of her lack of enthusiasm to rescue a kitten in this entirely unrealistic situation. <laughs> Here I'd been crawling over filthy rubbish and she simply sloughed off my efforts? Just because we had a lunch date and zero means of transporting this refugee? Humph. <laughs> An unspoken war commenced between my girlfriend and me. In my mind, she was my adversary standing between me and bringing this kitten home. <laughs> In her, I'll admit, probably more sane mind, we'd seen a kitten, we had no means of helping, and it was lunchtime. I pretended to stop thinking about the kitten walking into the restaurant while my mind plotted. In this war, I had the upper hand because I knew two things my girlfriend did not know. One, the fact that this war was even happening. <laughs> and two, I was about to harness the power of one of the most powerful substances on earth, a thing that makes bad ideas seem like good ones a thing that makes tone-deaf people sing karaoke and sound like fucking Adele. I'm talking about tequila. <laughs> now, I'm a master, my, a master at the type of battle that's fought between myself and someone who has no idea they're involved in said battle. 
During lunch, I knew she would have a margarita. When it was gone, I casually suggested a second. <laughs> You're not driving, enjoy yourself, babe. I watched the tequila work its magic, saw the relaxation in her eyes, watched her inhibitions lower one sip at a time. As we left the restaurant, I strategically walked quickly in front of her, approaching the kitten encampment silently. I peered down to find the baby sound asleep. I reached for her, my hands inches away. She woke up, wide-eyed, terrified of the psycho obsessing over her. Picking her up, holding her in my arms, I knew instantly she wasn't feral by her willingness to be held. My eye... <laughs> My eyes nearly swelled with tears. I began telling, not asking, my tequila-laden girlfriend that this kitten was coming home with us. How, she asked. We're on a motorcycle. You can't bring a cat on a damn motorcycle, babe. This sweet baby angel was already part of our family and there was zero chance of leaving her behind. <laughs> Holding my daughter, I saw it resort. <laughs> Holding my daughter, I saw, I sought resources to get her home. I noticed the green strap slung over my girlfriend's shoulder. Hand me your backpack, you can hold her in that. Her jaw dropped, contempla contemplating the insanity I was suggesting. Perhaps it was my unwavering determination. Maybe it was the two margaritas, or maybe just the sight of the kitten in my arms but my girlfriend agreed to hold that baby in the bag on the back of my bike the entire ride home. As I rode, my thoughts wandered. Was I selfish for doing this? Was this another one of my unnecessary risks? Where was the line bet between being a well-intentioned animal lover and being reckless because I cared more about the warm, fuzzy feeling inside than the safety of the animal itself? Luckily, Despite the moral dilemma, the story has a happy ending. The kitten slept the entire ride home, and we even snuck her past Border Patrol without an issue. <laughs> now she's my entire world and gives my life purpose. She's the light of my life. To those of you who think loving an animal like that sounds pathetic or exaggerated, I say, get a pet. But to the fellow animal parents in the audience who know exactly what I'm talking about, I say, aren't we so fucking lucky? <laughs> the next time I find myself rescuing kittens on a Harley in Mexico wasn't near... <laughs> <laughs> on a Harley in Mexico wasn't nearly as innocent or smooth sailing. This time I was alone because instead of going for a romantic lunch, I was going to buy drugs to satiate the opiate addiction I'd been suffering from. My dealers worked out of a thrift store in TJ. Everything started totally routine. Ride down, buy drugs, get high in the back room of the store, put my stash in my pocket and ride home. The one thing that interrupted my usual routine was yet again the sight of a tiny kitten. He was playing by himself in the store among the blankets and didn't resist one bit as I picked him up. I'd succeeded in the past to rescue a kitten on a bike in Mexico, so I didn't hesitate to begin the exact same process. My dealers supported the idea of rescuing him and offered a backpack to transport him with. Instead of being agreeable to the bag and simply taking a nap, this little firecracker fought and clawed his way out. We tried everything to convince the kitten to stay put, but he refused to be contained. The backpack wasn't working, so the dealers brought me one type of bag after another, none of which would contain the furry refugee. I persisted, but it all went from difficult to really fucking difficult when behind me I heard another tiny meow. No. The firecracker's brother strolled over to join the fun. You'd think these little feline street rats would have been grateful for the free coyote services I was providing. 
but they teamed up and made my efforts twice as hard. The scene had become quite the spectacle. One by one, my drug dealer's friends had gathered as we formed a coalition of kitten rescuers. <laughs> Despite the help, I was starting to feel defeated as none of our bags could safely contain them. Finally, one of the coalition members brought a small styrofoam box. We carved air, air holes and with the help of four grown men, finally succeeded in, contain <laughs> finally succeeded in containing the kittens and taping the lid shut tight. Their little meows broke my heart, but I knew I was probably saving their lives if I could pull this off. It was a scorching hot day, so I acted with haste. God forbid I cause slow deaths for these fluff buckets in my attempt to rescue them. I put the box inside a bag, flung it over my shoulder, and hustled to my motorcycle. This meowing box was far too conspicuous to sneak past Border Patrol, so I decided to try honesty. I immediately informed the agent that I was transporting kittens. <laughs> I begged him to not make me open the box. Sir, it's two kittens and I'm rescue that I'm rescuing, and if we open it, I don't think I'll be able to get them back in. He agreed to not open it, but was forced to send me to secondary. Waiting there, none of the agents so much as glanced at me as I sat blowing into the air holes to keep the babies cool. I panicked, thinking I'd doom them to suffocation in the styrofoam coffin. You've heard of liquid courage. Well, I learned there's also, I don't want to murder kittens courage. <laughs> so I yelled at every agent within earshot, can someone please help me? I have live animals in here. I got some strange looks, but finally over sauntered an agent. He insisted I remove the lid for him to inspect the contents. Again, I begged, sir, I swear, the only things in this box are two kitties and it's too risky to open it. He looked me dead in the eyes, pondering his next move, deciding if he could trust me. It was at this very moment that I remembered I was on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> and more than that, I had drugs in my fucking pocket. <laughs> my first thought was, what's gonna happen to these kittens when I go to jail? <laughs> My second thought was, fuck, I'm going to jail. <laughs> if I hadn't attempted this risky rescue, I would have sailed right through Border Patrol, but my unusual cargo had gotten me under the strict scrutiny of secondary. I was trying to have my cake and eat it too with my questionable decisions. Combining bringing illegal drugs and precariously contained kittens across the border could easily have had serious consequences. Nothing short of a miracle ensued when the agent agreed to an, to an inspection consisting of nothing more than looking in the air holes without removing the lid. Maybe he was an animal lover, maybe it was my lucky day, but the kittens and I were on our way into the US to an animal shelter. They were adopted shortly after, and I imagine they ch they've changed the lives of their human families the same way my first sm kitten smuggle has changed mine. <laughs> I will never take for granted that I made risky decisions which had happy endings. I know things could have turned out differently. The reality for animals living on the streets means a lack of medical care, human affection, food, and even clean water. Strays have an extremely short life expectancy. I have no regrets about the risks I took bringing kittens on a motorcycle across an international border because for them, it truly was a case of ride or die. Christy Nail, everyone. Christy Nail.